Following World War II, car production had stopped during the war. So if you were, and right after the war, you were buying a car that looked like a 1942, whatever it was. Well, Preston Tucker came out with this fantastic idea. He was going to come up with a completely new car for the public, and it was going to be the car everybody wanted. And that's exactly what he did with the 1948 Tucker. He introduced it in 1947 with a hand-built prototype that just blew everybody away. Then when he started producing the cars, they would take them to towns. They'd have thousands and thousands of people come check it out because the Tucker had three headlights. One, the center headlight lights your way around the corner. Engines in the rear. What did he use for an engine? A helicopter engine that he tipped on its side and water cooled. Car will do 130 miles an hour all day long. And the reason for that is you don't want a helicopter to slow down. Not a good result. He also had a pop-out safety windshield. He was the first car that had the padded dash. That's something that we just, we take for granted today. He did that in 1948 with his car. It's got a crash chamber based on the Indy 500 racing. Um, the seats are interchangeable front and back. Something that most people don't even know, open a door on a Tucker and they raise up two inches to get over a curb. The car has so many fascinating stories and fascinating features that uh, you'd be thrilled to own one. I think the future of uh, owning a Tucker is fantastic. Um, part of that was probably helped in 1988 when they made the movie, you know, Preston Tucker and uh, the Man in His Dream. Um, but as younger folks come up and they get into the car hobby, this is a car they can dream about. Um, it's still, in my mind, obtainable for a lot of people. And obviously this one is very obtainable. But I see that the prices of Tucker is really not, never coming down. If you look back um, just through history, they've always, always maintained their value. They always seem to go up. And part of that is just the story, the saga behind it, because the story makes, makes it that much more interesting. So I certainly don't ever see the value of it ever going down. Um, we've been involved with the Tucker story for uh, about three decades now, and everybody that I've met that owned them have been very passionate, wanting to find a car or owning a car. Um, met John in 2003. We were holding a national convention. He came up there, met him. And uh, he just let it be known that he was interested in finding a Tucker. Well, they don't usually change hands very often because the people that own them are very passionate about the history, passionate about saving the history. And so over the number of years, we kept trying to find a Tucker for him. Um, would just miss them, just miss the top bid, or the car would have sold on Friday and he called them on Monday, that kind of a thing. Um, when this car, we knew about it for several years, the, uh, the collection was there. Um, I finally called the owner and said, you know, are you ever going to do anything? I've had so many people want to buy this collection, but I have a real serious buyer that's very interested. Would you be interested in talking to them? So we went up and talked to him. Um, they made some arrangements, purchased the car, and he took a dream that started in 1949, early 1950, of resurrecting car 18, and he brought that to life because collectors for years, some huge name collectors, had owned this project and never got off the ground with it. John took his passion, something that he had from seeing an ad when he was a kid, took that passion and brought this car back to life, put it all together, and then was able to share it with club members and other enthusiasts. Um, and that's probably the, the nicest thing about owning the Tucker, is uh, some of them you know, are hidden away in museums and you pay admission to see it, but a lot of the owners really enjoy taking it out and showing people, letting them see the engine and how it runs, see the headlights come on, and in driving and, and the headlight turns with the, uh, the wheel. That's one thing that John has really brought to it, is that not only did he bring the dream alive for himself, but for future generations, and now just the idea that he's selling the car at no reserve, and that he's uh, given somebody an opportunity to buy it, no reserve, that's pretty remarkable. But I think the biggest thing just shows his character, that he's willing to sell this car and donate all the proceeds to the Mayo Clinic Cancer Research in the memory of his wife, that's just remarkable. That takes the dream and the passion that he's had and just keeps going. What a wonderful legacy.